It's always a great day when we get to look at a fanless mini PC, as it just doesn't happen very often. And the Neosme AC8 V2 may sound like a slight upgrade to the previous AC8N, but it's actually completely different. Gone is the rubber material covering the metal heatsink previously. Now we just have a large slab of metal acting as a heatsink and in a flatter form factor, which I like better. Apart from being silent, fanless minis are often used in industrial or commercial settings as they're basically the best choice for a computer that's on 24-7. They're used for LED billboards, in warehouses and factories with lots of dust. Neos may inform me this one is specifically targeted at that market, but I think it's fine for anyone looking for a silent mini PC. The V2 brings back Intel Zen 100, the budget 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU with Intel's UHD graphics, and comes in at a surprisingly affordable price point. At $170, US it's one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, fanless N100 minis out there. But that comes with a catch. That's the one with a small configuration, which is 128GB of storage and 8GB of DDR4 memory, and that's the one we're reviewing. If you want a quadruple storage and double the RAM, then the price goes up to $230, US, which is still a reasonable price when compared to the limited competition. The box comes with a wall power supply, screws, external antennas, a manual, HDMI, and VESA mount. The front has four USB 5 gigabit, a micro SD card reader, which is always welcome, and a separate headphone and microphone jack. I suspect USB-C isn't too useful for the target market, and there's a COM port on the back. If you don't know what a COM port is, you don't need to know, and won't be using it. There's also a DisplayPort and HDMI allowing up to 4K 60Hz. Dual Realtek Gigabit LAN and Intel's Wi-Fi 6 AX200 is inside for some of that wireless and Bluetooth action. Apart from the COM port, the Mini still caters pretty well to the average consumer. When you've looked at as many Mini PCs as I have, you really appreciate the small stuff, such as being able to open them easily. And Neosme gets it right. The screws are adjacent to the rubber feet. Hallelujah! Four screws, lift the lid, and marvel at how easy it was to open. Inside is a DDR4-3200 RAM stick, and yes, just the one, because older Lake N CPUs don't support dual channel memory. There's the M.2 Wi-Fi card and a Gopher 2 M.2 SATA drive, but I tested an NVMe drive and it is supported at Gen 3 X1 speeds. Windows 11 Pro is included with the V2 and a malware scan came back clean. The quick and dirty Ubuntu test of a USB drive worked fine. I don't recall any older Lake and me not working properly with Ubuntu that we've reviewed so far. Before we head into the benchmarks, I wanted to point out that as with all fanless minis tested this year, the outer casing gets very warm as it transfers the heat of the CPU passively. You won't get burned touching the mini at its hottest, but you won't want to hold your hand on it too long either. Alright, so the Neosme V2 already does much better out of the box in single core than the previous effort and keeps up even after the power limit was increased in the BIOS for the V1. The only fanless mini that beats it is the Minix Z100. In multi-core, again, a much better result and almost matches the lower performing actively cooled minis. Setting the power limit higher on the V2 doesn't do anything, so this is as good as it gets. Geekbench single core shows a good result with the V2 beating a few actively cooled minis. In multi-core, it beat the Camry AK2 Plus before it had its power limit increased. H.264 video encoding test is fairly long and the V2 beat an actively cooled mini. Not bad at all. It was also close to its predecessor, but quite a bit behind the Minix Z100. In 3 d Mark, the Neosme V2 performs as you'd expect for a mini with DDR4-3200. It gets beaten by the DDR5 minis, and is slightly behind in DX11 and DX12 benchmarks by a few percent. And the Steel Nomad result is as expected. A 128GB M.2 SATA drive isn't going to be speedy, and this one's the slowest so far. Unfortunately, there was no temperature sensor on the drive, but I didn't notice any thermal throttling. That being said, there is space for a modest heatsink on the drive if you want to add some cooling. External antennas are the solution to all the world's problems, and this mini doesn't disappoint. We have a new winner with the best Bluetooth result seen yet at 14 meters or 45 feet. And unsurprisingly, the Wi-Fi range also didn't disappoint 
with no issues at all playing Valorant at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. Intel N100 minis make for decent office mini PCs. You can get in some light gaming and they make nice media stations thanks to their great video decoding capabilities. They're also popular as a PFSense and retro emulation box where the N100 tops out at 720p PS2, GameCube and Wii. Of course, the biggest benefit of the Neosme AC8 V2 is that it's silent, so if you don't need a speed demon but enjoy some quiet or need something that can be on 24-7, then fanless computing is for you my friend. I did test latency mon with Cinebench running in the background and unfortunately it failed the test. You could see dropouts with audio production while using this mini. While I wouldn't suggest using an Intel N100 for video editing, it's actually pretty capable thanks to its hardware video decoder. Simpler 1080p projects are possible and the CPU will be working plenty hard to get it done. Mashing the delete key during startup when the Neosme logo shows up gets you into the BIOS and, as mentioned, increasing the power limit didn't work. In chipset are the options most people look for. And that's it really. An idle power draw of 9 watts is pretty average, and the maximum of 24 watts matches the Minis Forum UN100D, which has around the same performance. What surprised me was the impressive maximum CPU temperature of just 72C. This Mini could handle a slightly higher power limit, but it's still impressive as is. The V2 isn't very large either, and smaller than the previous Neos May Mini PC. Alright, that covers it. Let's go over the pros and cons. The Neosme AC8 V2 is fanless and few make it into the under 250 US dollar mark, let alone under 200 US dollars. It's easy to open. Wireless and Bluetooth range is excellent and the maximum CPU temp is kept low. However, multi-core performance is pretty mediocre. It would have been nice to be able to increase the power limit to push it further. The V2 also doesn't have a modern feature set due to its specific target market. A COM port isn't going to be useful for consumers, and there's no USB-C. A heatsink on the OS drive would have been a nice addition, or a thermal pad connecting it to the case, but the M.2 SATA should hold up okay. So that's the Neosme AC8 V2, a much improved mini over the previous version. If you're looking for a budget fanless mini to run 24-7 and worried about temps, then this is the one for you. The 170 US dollar price point is a great entry level into the world of silent computing as long as you don't need a lot of storage and memory. That all being said, the Neosme AC8N was a popular choice when it was released as it was one of, if not the first fanless N100 minis on the market. You can check out the review for it right here. Cheers!